independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Why? Here's my first question. Why did you say in that briefing that President Trump had ordered a quid pro quo? Because that's what people are saying that I said, but I, I didn't say that. Did, was it somebody else? Were you abducted? I feel like you were abducted. Is this what it was? Somebody had your kids hidden somewhere, right? Your wife, you better do what we say. I know you heard me say that, but I didn't say that. It's a great song a few years ago from uh, Shaggy. Remember him? Shaggy! It wasn't me, right? Caught you on camera. It wasn't me. That's all you got to say. I heard you say quid pro quo. Yeah, but it wasn't me. I didn't say that. You guys did. You heard it wrong, right? You can understand. I I was speaking, and you guys didn't get where I was going because my brain. I'm playing chess. You're playing checkers. That's the way this game was. I didn't say it. In the past, the president had mentioned for me to time to time about the DNC server. He'd mentioned the DNC server to other people publicly. He even mentioned it to President Zelensky in the phone call, but it wasn't connected to the aid. No, it wasn't connected to the aid. What I said was, we do this all the time, but. We don't do this all the time. We do. We, by the way, we do do this all the time, but not. There's a difference. And I tried to explain this to people who are so like they just live for Trump. Trump can do no wrong. I try to explain this to people. The difference between nations holding back something based on the fact that we don't believe that you're going to do the right thing with the money and we need to protect our money, our stuff as a nation comparatively to a singular thing, i.e. a campaign that benefits only one person, is much different. You could say you misspoke. You could say all of those things. But you can't say that's not what I said because, Mick, it's exactly what you said. I believe that anyone listening to what you said in that briefing could come to only one conclusion. Let's play what you said. Sure. Did he also mention to me in past the corruption related to the DNC server? Absolutely. No question about that. Um, but that's it. And that's why we held up the money. You just described is a quid pro quo. It is funding will not flow unless the investigation into the into the Democratic server uh, happened as well. We, we do we do that all the time with foreign policy. Yeah. With foreign policy based on what? Based on protecting our interest as a nation, not benefiting somebody singularly. And that is still the problem that so many people have. If I'm the president this week, because last week was ugly. Last week was a mess. You had the Syria thing and the Kurds. That thing went south super fast. Right? Really, really fast. Now you're talking about leaving 250 soldiers, maybe? We had 1,000 in and around the area, 50 in a certain area that kept kind of the intelligence side of it and helped the Kurds out, which this is not the first time that we've abandoned the Kurds. It's not even the second. God knows we have done it since, oh, I don't know, early 1900s. We have promised them things, tried to work on stuff, and failed over and over again. And administration after administration, right and left, have failed them. But that didn't go well, right? At all. And then you had the Doral thing, which was just baffling. That Mick Mulvaney, I bet you didn't say that, Mick. Maybe you didn't say that. And then this, a little bit south. Was not a good look. Was not a good week. If I am Trump, economy, immigration. Hey, there's a reason they're talking about immigration at these debates. There's a reason. Because we're slowing it down. There's a reason that these things aren't happening. We're talking about, they're talking about bringing people federal jobs. If you can't have a job, we can't even get people to fill the jobs here. Get out in front of all of this stuff. And when you talk about what he says, if you have to, even though you're trying to distance yourself, God knows that Mick is probably not long for both of his jobs. What you say is, We're trying to figure out what happened in 2016 because we think there was a lot more to the story than meets the eye, not just so much about them trying to catch me at something, but other things. What it looks like is they're obsessed with impeaching you. You're obsessed trying to prove everybody wrong about 2016 and all of this stuff. You guys are still living. It's back to the future day, and you're still living back in the future. Time to figure something out. Move forward. 323-538-2423. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Do love hearing from you. So a huge settlement today. 
that was supposed to be a bellwether case in Ohio when it comes to opioids. And this was a massive case that people were looking at. While there's been settlements elsewhere, this was supposed to be the first one that really hits trial in a way that was going to set it up potentially nationwide for states and cities and communities to come after not only the 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 people that were the pharmaceutical companies, distributors, and everybody else. Three of the nation's largest drug distributors and a drug manufacturer agreed to a $260 million settlement to avoid what was to be the first federal opioids trial. A holdout was the pharmacy chain Walgreens, which could go to trial months from now if there's no settlement first. The agreement resolves a case brought by Ohio's Cuyahoga and Summit counties, but could lay the groundwork for settlements in some 2,300 other opioids cases filed in federal courts nationwide. Yeah, and this is massive. So, so they're suing not just drug makers, but distributors, people like Walgreens. Who and and the difference between this and like a class action lawsuit, the way that they coupled these things was each defendant may get a different settlement. So if you went to a class action lawsuit uh, and and you said, all right, you're going to do everybody, you're going to get this or everybody, we're going to break it down. And there could be five or six different drug companies inside of there. One may pay a billion. One may pay a hundred million. So there could be different settlement sizes. And Walgreens' whole thing is, well, hold on a second. We didn't do anything. We don't manufacture these things. Yeah, but you distributed them. And the way they're looking at it is you also delivered them. Now, I don't know what they're supposed to do, but there are some issues here that they're looking at. On And because some of them, uh, these distributors, well, they're paying, you know, a decent amount of money. Others are paying even small pharmaceutical companies, local regional ones, with just a fall, a small few locations are going to be paying to the tune of a million plus dollars. But this was seen as the bellwether situation here when it comes to the opioid addiction and how much money they're going to try to get. They're not just going after the pharmaceutical companies. Anybody who had a hand in any way, shape, or form from the moment. It was invented, sold, and distributed. They are going to try to get every single person who participated, every company who participated, to pay something for it. Some are going to donate different drugs that help some of the communities. So... And, and the other thing is, too, and why this is important is because it, these are community-based in a lot of ways and city-based. Because in Ohio, they were upset with some of the, the way that things went out because Columbus was getting all the money. And then they were kind of keeping it and distributing it how it sees fit. These communities wanted to take it on inch by inch and say, look, this deals with us, not you. We don't want you distributing money that we should be getting in the way that you think we should have it. But this is big. Again, not even you don't even, you didn't have to be the patent holder. You didn't have to invent it. You didn't have to sell it to the doctors. You didn't have to do any of that stuff. You could literally be filling the prescription. And their thought is, mm, maybe you guys uh, should be held accountable too. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Again, Syria is still a nightmare right now. And uh, as far as what's going on, well, the pause isn't really a pause. It's been a ceasefire really in name only. It's The fighting really has continued over the last few days. Although there have been signs of some success because the SDF, they announced yesterday they are withdrawing or have withdrawn from Ras al Ain, that strategically important town. So I think that in Washington will be read as a success of sorts. Is it really? I mean, we've let down the Kurds. Now, understand that area there, right, in Syria the northern part of it, is vitally important in a sense that it's one of the only democracies. And it sounds weird, but the area that the Kurds have set up there is essentially a very secular area compared to so much of the Middle East. It is a democracy. And you've got ethnic cleansing going on. You've got all kinds of things happening there that we because we abandoned them. We did. We failed them again. Woodrow Wilson failed them trying to get them their own area after the fall of the Ottoman Empire.
Then you go and you look and you see where we failed them over and over again. We tried to get them to do bidding against, the, you know, the, you know, we we got them to fight the Iraqis and we got them to, to, to mess around with the Iranians. We promised them all of these things. There was, I mean, there's genocide. There's all kinds of things that happened and we failed them on numerous occasions. Why would we even think for a second they would ever want to deal with us again? Well, we shouldn't be. No, we shouldn't, but we are. We go into places. We do things, right? More of them were killed when the entire Yugoslavian civil war was going on. More Kurds were were, were killed than what took place there. But Clinton's like, oh, there's a genocide over there. We better go over and, and, and it's too close to another NATO ally. We better help out. We better figure something out. And they ignored so much of the other stuff. We did a lot in, in, in promising, and they continued to follow along with us. Quite frankly, this is a failure. This is. No, it's no, there's no two ways about it. We all want to bring people home. It all sounds great. But when you say we're bringing people home, you're really not. These thousand soldiers scattered throughout Syria were just going to go to different parts of Syria or elsewhere in the region. They weren't coming home. So that's disingenuous to say that. Well, we shouldn't have been involved in... No, we shouldn't. We'd love to not be involved in all kinds of stuff. But you and I both know that's not the way the world works. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. And yes, the best story of the day. Mitt Romney. Oh, my goodness. Now, Producer Phil, uh, Anthony Weiner was Carlos Danger. Is this correct? Yes, he was. Ah, Carlos Danger. Well, Mitt's got his own name. Senator Mitt Romney says he has a secret Twitter account and that he sometimes uses it to defend himself when people are mean. He calls it his lurker account. I mean, he admitted to it during an interview with The Atlantic. Afterward, a reporter discovered an account called Pierre Delecto that follows all of Romney's children and was created shortly after he announced he was running for the presidency back in 2011. When asked about it, Mitt Romney responded, c'est moi. Meaning it's me in French. <laughs> I added that last part. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Pierre Delecto. I'm Pierre Delecto. Ha ha! The wonderful Pierre. Yes, have you met my friend? Ha 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 ha! Carlos Danger. <laughs> that is such a. Who is it? Uh, uh, Kevin Durant and a lot of other sports stars will have burner accounts. Right, you had that guy for the Philadelphia 76ers last year that had burner accounts. Just so stupid. I don't have one. I just have a regular one at Chad Benson Show. That's your Twitter. You can tweet at me, Instagram as well at Chad Benson Show. Check out the Facebook. And always, if you're new to the show, you can text. This is a text line. I don't do many phone calls here, mostly because we forget what the number is. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three three two three five three eight Chad. That is the text line. Hey, I got a great question for you. You ever heard of AMAC? You haven't? Fastest growing, over 50 organization in the country. Share your values. Common sense immigration reform, right? Making sure that Social Security and Medicare are taken care of in ways where they don't have to go in, take everything over, raise taxes. No, they're fighting for you and your values. Common sense immigration reform. Gotta love that. Not open borders. Immigration reform that's real, that makes sense. On top of that, the benefits, too numerous to mention, retail, restaurant, hotel discounts, and oh so much more. Now is your chance to join for free. It is simple and easy. Go to amac.us forward slash chat or call 888-355-1617. That's 888-355-1617. It's one year free membership. It is on me. You'll, they're going to fight for you and your values. And on top of that, the benefits are amazing. amac.us forward slash chat. AMAC is better, better for you, better for America. Chad Benson Show. need to fear. We promise we won't give you a noogie and make you cry Russia, Russia, Russia. Who is the fearless leader? Pui. Pui, pui, and double pui. Boy, it's your language. This is a family show, remember? Who is the family too? Nostrovia. This is Chad Benson. 
It was more study in jet lag than one in aviation technology, even though Captain Sean Golding was happy with the way the 787 Dreamliner handled the 10,000-mile journey. We were airborne for 19 hours and 16 minutes, and we landed here in Sydney with a comfortable 70 minutes of fuel. Some of the passengers had their brain waves and blood pressure as well as their melatonin levels monitored to see how the body handles a flight that long. The idea was to try to get travelers acclimated to Australia time as soon as they boarded the plane at 9.30 p.m. New York time Friday night, and to keep that cycle as they deplaned at 7.30 in the morning, Sydney time, Sunday morning. That's a long flight. That, 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 that's a long flight. 19 hours. I think the longest flight I have been on, it's been about 12, 13 hours. It is, uh, it's an ass kicker. It is. That's a, it's a long flight. Long. I don't. Nineteen hours is just feels. And no matter what you think you can do, like I'm going to sleep on the plane. I'm going to do all these things. I tried everything to try to catch up as fast as possible. It still takes a couple days. It does. That just seems like a long, long flight. Speaking of flights, so the Navy has a doomsday plane. Yeah, this thing's supposed to withstand everything, right? Like everything. Like huge. Like, big time. Like, nuclear bombs, everything. It's, you know, drives, it, it could fly through anything. But apparently a bird, because a bird struck it, and they had to make an emergency land. What I'm trying to say here is if you're going to attack the American military might, especially in the air, might I suggest a bird? Train the birds, and we'll train birds to fight you. And then in the end, we'll just have animal warfare. Ooh, yeah, right? Like, hmm, hmm, that's something to think about right there. You're like, oh, yeah? Yeah, that'd be pretty interesting. Bunnies. Remember when Napoleon was attacked by bunnies? That's true, by the way. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Text the program. Again, the text line you're new to the show is the 323 323- 538-2423. People leave voice messages on there super mad at me. Why do you give out the number? It's the text line. You've already failed the first test to be on the show. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. I earned my spurs on the battlefield, and Donald Trump earned his spurs in a letter from a doctor. Former Defense Secretary James Mattis, who resigned in protest in December, roasted his former boss just a day after the president called him the most overrated general. I'm honored to be considered that by Donald Trump because he also called Meryl Streep an overrated actress. So I guess I'm the Meryl Streep of generals. <laughs> oh, now everybody hates him. Trump's, by the way, his popularity amongst Republicans, uh, just it that doesn't wane, right? There's a certain area in between about 38 to about 42%. It sits there all the time. It's not like it plummets. Now, on the other side, you got a lot of independents now that are kind of moving over somewhat into, you know, yes, impeach, don't impeach. But even this weekend, Lindsey Graham talked a little bit about, like, the impeachment side of things, saying, look, if there's something there, there, then we're going to have to take a look at it. And, I, you know, we'll see. And why is that? Because Trump turns on people. The people that are going to protect you, you turn on them when they come out and say, I don't like this right here. I didn't like that. And automatically, they're the worst people on the earth, and you hammer them. People get bored of that. They do. Right. Because they look at it as a quid pro quo friendship. You better do everything I say or else scenario and I'll help you out when you need it. But outside of that, if you dare speak a word of negativity or have opinion that differs from mine, then you're done and I'm going to come out and hammer you. And then later on, I'll expect you to have loyalty to me or else or else what? 
It's a question. When I heard what uh, Mulvaney said, it it pushed pushed me uh, really across the Rubicon. Look, I fought with people on the air about is there a quid pro quo and and does this rise to the level of impeachment? I now believe that it does. And I say it with great sadness. This is not something I I really wanted to do. I mean, I voted to impeach Bill Clinton, and that was really hard. And this has been excruciatingly hard. But this kind of behavior, in my opinion, cannot be tolerated, and action is going to have to be taken now will it that's a different question because it is political right there's no real definitions high crimes and misdemeanors it's political you're not going to get the amount of people at least at this moment in time they're going to jump ship you need about what 15 republicans that's not happening at this moment in time doesn't mean somewhere down the road stuff can't come up where eventually people go you know what i'm not going to protect the badge i'm protecting the thing that matters far more than the badge which is our Constitution, our freedoms, our republic. I'm not going to protect the badge. Because that's what happens, right? We protect the badge. You're a Democrat, you protect a Democrat. You're a Republican, you protect a Republican. Every once in a while, some people will jump over to the other side, and it's got even worse now when it comes to us trying to get anything through the House to the Senate to the Senate to the president's desk and have them sign it because now it's not only protecting the badge when it comes to i'm going to stick up for my side it's let's not even let the other side potentially have a victory which is not a real good way to run anything because it fails to see who we are which is the most important we are not badges we're not parties we're people We entrust you to do the best that you can, knowing full well that you're just one spoke in a wheel. But every spoke's got its job to do, and not everything's going to be perfect. We realize that. Now, some people don't. Some people want one-party rule, which is stupid, right? Because what what happens with one-party rule? It can go south fast. It can. Nobody wants that. But they've got to do better. And protecting the badge is is all they care about, right? That's all we care about is protecting this. That's all we care about is protecting that. We just care about that. It's like when you look at the NBA, you look at the NFL. Last week, a week and a half, the whole thing that went down with the NBA, right? It's, I'm sure they wanted no part of it. Players kowtowing. You have Adam Silver, who is walking a fine line of these people all want me to talk about, you know, hey, we should be able to protect our employees from saying certain things. By the way, too, I'm also looking at you at revenue and things like that. He had to walk a fine line and he kowtowed somewhat. And by the way, over the weekend, the Chinese essentially threatened him saying, you know, there, there could be repercussions over what? Our freedoms here, there could be repercussions over our freedoms and what our businesses and sports franchises do? You're willing to threaten that? And just to be clear, we did use the word regrettable initially, but the regrettable was modifying the fact that we had upset our Chinese fans. And maybe a mistake or not, but I think, I mean, it's too long an answer, but basketball has a very long history in China. Um, yeah, it does. Naismith went over, you know, he had uh, Chris Ditcher. They spread, tried to spread Christianity, and, and the missionaries went over there and tried to show them basketball, and they've participated for a very long time in basketball, and they love basketball. I get that, but freedoms have a longer history here than basketball. And that's something that we should think about. But China, don't dare threaten us. Like, what are you thinking about? Dare threat. Because he said, look, they they wanted me to fire him. They wanted me to fire Daryl Morey. And last season, over 600 million people in China watched a portion of an NBA game. So the regrettable notion was that we had upset our fans. I didn't think at that time, while we were saying we, we we regretted upsetting our fans, that also at the same time supporting Daryl Morey's right to ex- express himself, right to tweet. Obviously, we made clear that we were being asked to fire him. 
by the Chinese right. government, by the, the parties we dealt with, government and business. We said there's no chance that's happening. There's no chance we'll even discipline him. Yeah, which, which shouldn't even be talked about. Because too often not, sports, and he tried to do it. He tried to have it both. You have to protect one or the other, right? Well, what's the most important thing? Basketball in China or our freedoms and the values that we stand for? Because if, 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 it's, if it's not, look, and I understand, like, Apple was in a different position two weeks ago when they have an app that was made for Hong Kong, which whether people want to understand that is, 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 is China now. Now, the way it was supposed to be is from 97 for the next 50 years, it was one country, two rules, and they've kind of scrapped that. Not a shocker, but you selling something made specifically for them, and they say, no, we don't want that here, that's different. Now, if they said, hey, we want you to take down Cardi B's music, or we want you to take down music of you know, you know, Metallica, that's a different story. Because, no, that's our freedoms here. That is something that is for the American people. And he tried to walk the fine line of, I need to protect the badge, but I also need to protect the revenue. And then each one of these people, and you got to think about something, too, and the way that these, these players kowtowed is, because not only is it protecting the badge they're trying to do, but it's also each one of them views themselves, the Hardens of the world and the LeBron James and all of these other, they're a brand themselves. They have their own badge they want to protect. But remember, the reason you are is because of here, not because of China. The reason you are is because of that. And if that's what you want and you value those things more, knock yourself out. Shut up and dribble over there, right? Go for it. Knock yourself out. You'll make a ton of money. See, soccer players do it all the time now. They go over that big payday, go play in the Chinese Super League, get paid, God, a million bucks a week. Knock yourself out. That's fantastic. Well, they don't really want to. No, they won't. Because without the NBA, they're not as cool. Without the NBA behind them, it's not as hip. Let's be real. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Love hearing from each and every one of you. Speaking of freedoms, if you guys aren't following what's going on in Australia, Australia has an issue when it comes to their press and their freedoms going on right now. And it's been really ugly because of some laws that were passed about freedoms and they're trying to clamp down on certain things uh, when it comes to potentially stories that may, as they see it, harm Australia, in particular their defenses, defense system, or what they see to be as intelligence. The Australian people want to see balance in the way we get on with the job. Now, press freedom is important. There is no question about that. Absolutely no question about that. And I have been very strong on the importance of freedom of speech throughout my parliamentary career. But there are national security considerations that need to be taken into account. Yeah. And so this all stems on the fact that they arrested a journalist and they're essentially filed two charges against her. This is back a, a few months ago. And that right there was Angus Taylor, one of the people in Parliament, and it is really unsettling what's going on there. And we talk about all of our stuff here. And, I, and, and over the weekend, you know, I flipped around a few times. Uh, just I saw a couple things last night because I tried to catch up. You see people saying saying stuff like, well, you know, we're, we're an embarrassment to the world. We're not an embarrassment to the world. Shut your pie hole with your embarrassment of the world. The British have been trying to escape the European Union, for God knows how long, right? The Germans and the Italians are under all kinds of issues with mass immigration and infighting. The French, what more do you need to say, right? Australia's got this going on. So shush with your, we're the worst. You're that person that says your kid's always the worst. I bet it was my kid. I bet never once saying, maybe it wasn't your kid. Maybe, maybe your kid's not the worst. Maybe it wasn't your kid. Maybe your kid's all right. Right? 
But settle that down. I mean, they've got real issues here. They've raided newsrooms. So over the last two days, they've been printing papers with nothing. It's just all been redacted. You can't see anything. Same thing at night. They've been running primetime in their primetime shows, essentially nothing. And, and, and same thing with their news. Because their whole thought process is you're invading the news. You're coming in here and you're raiding news departments. Could you imagine today if they raided the L.A. Times, which put out a, a, a report, like an op-ed piece, talking about how they're the paper of resistance and how their singular goal is essentially to take down Donald Trump. Could you imagine if Trump ordered them to raid and say it's for national security? People be apoplectic, and you should be. So when you say that we're the worst compared to 323 3, at Chet Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Car Shield, baby. I got Car Shield. Producer Phil, we're going to make him get some Car Shield, too. Why? Because he got a new car. <gasps> what? Yeah, Car Shield's amazing. If you don't know what Car Shield's all about, let's see. The average car now has been on the road for about 12 years. Think about that. Cars are lasting longer. They're in better shape. They're rolling really nice. But if it's going to be on the road that long, and many of you are like me, my car's a little bit older, and I love my car. But... I have a warranty when I bought it, so I got Car Shield. Car Shield's incredible. I get 24 7 roadside assistance, a rental car for free when and if my car goes in the shop, and the shop is the shop that I choose. They get them paid directly. I pay small deductible, and that's awesome. I love the rental car part too, right? Because if your car's in there for three or four days, instead of you know bumming rides or having to do ride shares, guess what, kids? You get a rental car for free. That's huge. What are you waiting for? Do what I did get covered by the ultimate extended vehicle protection. Call 800-CAR-6000, mention code Benson. That saves you 10% right off the top. Or go to carshield.com, carshield.com. Use code Benson, saving you 10%. They're going to treat you really good. they got any kind of plan that you need for the car that you have. 800-CAR-6000, code Benson, saves you 10%. A deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show. Take a fake news break. Check, 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 check out the really important news of the day at our website, chadbensonshow.com. Once there, click on Chad's free podcast and get real. The Chad Benson Show, where truth and the American way live. Print free. You do not know me. Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, debuted in first at the weekend box office. The sequel earning just over $36 million. That's well below what was expected and about half what the 2014 original earned, but enough to knock Joker into second after two weeks on top. <laughs> it earned around $29 million bucks. You're welcome, America. Zombieland Double Tap posted a solid $26.7 million debut. Good for third. Yeah, I saw no movies. I haven't seen Jack and I were going to see a movie the other day, and we just decided, no, we're going to go chill and relax, swim, goof around, have a good time. I'm like, Jack, do you want to go see movies? Yeah, Dad, I want to go see Adam's Family. I said, all right, let's do it. Nah, let's go to the hotel and relax first before we do some other stuff. And then we decided against it. I thought, I get it. I get it. Then he wanted to watch Netflix because he's got a bunch of cool things on Netflix that he's been watching. So we watched some Netflix. Speaking of Netflix. Netflix says the number of new subscribers was less than expected for a second straight quarter, meaning the company may have plateaued, especially in the U.S., where it saturated households in its 12 years. Competition from cheaper streaming services like Disney's $7 and Apple's $5 monthly fees, that's about half of Netflix's $13, also adding to the uncertainty. And his weight on Netflix shares, which are down 30% from its peak of $423 16 months ago. Disney yeah. and Apple debuting their services in November. Walt Disney is a parent company of ABC News. Yeah, because they've got all kinds of competition. And if you've got little ones at home, you're probably going to spend money on Disney over Netflix. You don't want to have all of these subscriptions because at some point in time, cutting the cord isn't as cost effective if you've still got to pay for Internet and have seven different things to choose from. So you're now going to have the a la carte opportunity to pick and choose from where you want to go. And Disney is going to put a hurting on. You got the Time Warner and everybody else. And that's why the battle for grabbing the comfort food of television shows is so massive. Friends, The Office, they're paying huge dollars for these things on top of trying to build up their own original programming 
because they realize the battle is absolutely on. Amazon's coming. They're throwing huge money at it uh, now for more and more originality. You've got Apple doing the exact same thing. They're throwing massive amounts of dollars at it. It is a battle, and this is great for the consumer. We've got choice. We've absolutely got choice. And we're going to have choices in the way that we consume it as well because they're going to start throwing deals at it. So this is huge. It's never been a better time in the entertainment world than it is now for choice. We are no longer just captured by a few televisions and a couple cable companies. We have so much choice, so many original things. that We can't even get through all of the things that are available to us. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. So when you tweet, you go there to Twitter. Now when you text me, it's 323-538-CHAD, right? 323-538-2423. If you want to leave a message, maybe we could play it. I don't know. So many people call there. And like I say, if you call that line, you've already failed the first test of the Chad Benson Show. It is the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Much of the pressing business of the American people requires coordination with our colleagues uh, across the Capitol. Now, Mitch, you say that. Chuck, what do you say? It's well known in the country that the Senate is the legislative graveyard. That Leader McConnell has not put on the floor bill after bill after bill <clears throat> on major issues affecting the country that demand attention. Now, you just said that they, you guys weren't going to work together, Mitch. I'm not sure, like, what's going on here, Mitch? By the sound of their comments, it almost sounds as if they're coming around to Republicans' long-held views on the necessity of American leadership all around the world. But once again, actions speak louder. And thus far, our Democratic colleagues have not even been willing to get past partisanship for the sake of job number one, funding our military. Okay, I, I, I'm I confused. Now, Chuck, so Mitch is saying you guys aren't doing anything, not doing the stuff you're supposed to be doing, and and you guys are all partisan, and all you guys care about is getting Trump, and yada, 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 and you say that, well, I mean, it's just a graveyard. Most everybody knows that he's proud that he's the Grim Reaper. So now to say, will Democrats want to legislate? Well, it's all up to Leader McConnell. I, You guys are... Just both awful. It's <laughs> the best way to describe that. I can't, I can't listen to you. Just both of you go back to your coffins, and we'll call you later on. I don't know what they're going to do. Look, it's, it's a bunch of crap. For those of you who think, because for as bad as Nancy and them in, they've, they've passed some stuff, and it gets down there, and it dies. But you know what? When Paul Ryan was there, he passed a bunch of stuff, and, he, and, and Mitch killed it, too. Like Mitch is, I mean, there's some, there's some real, real truth in that. Hey, he's kind of the Grim Reaper. He'll take some stuff up, and sometimes if he knows it's not going to pass, he just won't touch it, right? He just won't touch it. He's very. He and Nancy, they get it, right? They've they, and Chuck gets it. They've been around the block on more than a few occasions. They understand this is what politics is all about. And the reality is, is whether it's true or not, and it seems to be pretty true, when I talk to several Congress people, even on the left side of the aisle and the right side of the aisle, they all kind of say the same thing to me. We can talk about other things, and it doesn't get noticed because the media is focused on one thing. And the reality is, is and Nancy's been doing something very shrewd lately, and I don't know if you guys have, have noticed this, 
when she goes to the microphone, she wants people to understand that they're trying to do other things. Does anybody have any questions about such and such or whatever she's working on? How about any questions about this? Any questions? Because she wants everybody to kind of get a feel that, you know, uh, we're trying to do other things, even if it's just in an appearance that we're looking to do other things. Because here's the craziness, right? Let's flash forward 12 and a half months. A few scenarios here. Trump wins. They keep the House. Senate stays the same. We have two, four more years of this. Here's another scenario. Mitch kills anything when it comes to impeachment. And they said it's going to take longer now because every time they have somebody come in and they bring them in, they give them new leads and then they got to go down that rabbit hole. It's like YouTube at night. How many of you guys done that? You're hanging out. Right. Producer Phil, you're awful at this. You'll be you'll be sending me tweets and text messages in the middle of the night. And you're like, oh, because why? Because you went down a rabbit hole. Next thing you know, you're watching a drummer from a 70s band. You don't remember. Absolutely. I do it all the time. Yeah, there is uh, the lady up front, the, uh, uh, our new lady that's uh, uh, working the front desk. Patty, really nice lady. Uh, she goes, oh, my God, I went down the rabbit hole of YouTube the other day. It's cra- my son. It's all of us have. Right. And that's what's going on. Somebody gives them a lead. They chase it somewhere. Next thing you know, we're on to something new. But let's do this. Let's flash forward and look at a couple scenarios. Scenario one, everything stays the same. Trump wins. Senate's still there. They've tried to impeach him. It dies. We have two years of nothing and trying to figure out what's the latest scandal. The media is like, oh, darn, we were resisting. And in the back, they're like, oh, my God, this is awesome because it's everything we want. Right? It's like that sports team that comes to town and they have your favorite player, but they're playing your hometown team. And your goal is, I want my favorite player to do great, but I want them to lose and I want my team to win. And that's kind of what the media wants. Their favorite player is Donald Trump. They don't want the Republicans to do anything or Trump, but they don't want him to really leave because they enjoy all that he brings them. So we'd have two more years of that. How about this? Trump wins crazy, wacky world. Republicans don't hold the Senate. And the Democrats hold serve, I mean, in the Senate, uh, in Congress. So now you've got Trump with a Democratic Senate and the same thing in the House. Are we going to get more? I mean... How exhausted are people? Pretty damn exhausted. I'm exhausted. I'm sick and tired of talking about it. There's so many other things to talk about in life. But the reality is this is what's in front of us right now. This is all that Washington, D.C. and the Beltway are abuzz about. They don't care about anything else. They're not looking at anything else. They're not really doing anything other than spending a good majority of their time with the powerful movers and shakers. And that's something else that people need to understand. These people, the Schiffs, the Pelosi's, the, 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 until Elijah Cummings passed away, these people are on certain committees, but they're also movers and shakers. They're the snapping the fingers, get things done people. They're the, we need to take this up, get it done kind of people. And it matters for a lot of people. We've sent you guys there to do a job of which we don't expect much. Let's be real, right? You get a few things done. We're pleasantly surprised. We're not asking. It's like my mom used to say, Chad, I'm not asking you to get an A. Like, you get a C. We're like, whoa, we're going to go out to dinner. I mean, we're not asking for a ton. Just a little effort. Act like you guys kind of like each other. You know, we've kind of set the bar pretty low. They can't even do that. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Trump doing what Trump does. This whole thing is very bad for our country. In the midst of that, I'm trying to get out of wars. And we may have to get in wars, too. Okay, wait, what? Now, the Washington Post is reporting that Trump essentially talked to Orban of Hungary, not Roy Orban of uh, Traveling Wheelberries, but, uh, oh, that's Orbison, my bad. But <laughs> they, uh, uh, apparently, the Washington Post is, is reporting that Putin and Orban kind of like, hey, 
Don, you should totally get out of that. That stuff's crazy. You should get away from there. You should run away from there. You should get away. He's like, really? You guys think so? You think people are going to be mad at me? Now he's talking about, we may have to get into wars. Wait, wait, hold on a second. Oh, the whole, you, you're trying to end wars, not get into wars. Yeah, totally. Totally. The president of the United States should be allowed to run the country, not have to focus on this kind of crap, while at the same time doing a great job on Syria and Turkey and all of the other things that we're doing. All the other things we're doing. It's really the most amazing thing. I'm incredible. I really am. I talked to him. I asked Mirror Mirror on the wall, who's credible? It's all you. It's pretty much just you. You're it. He went after uh, Romney. Romney's a pain in his ass. They stick together. They don't have Mitt Romney nope. in their midst. They don't have people like that. They stick together. You never see them break off. Yeah, they do. I mean, my God, look at what's going on with Tulsi Gabbard and Hillary Clinton. She's like, she's a Russian operative. <laughs> no, nah, I don't think so. She's something, but she isn't that. And she called your BS on the Democratic side a long time ago. She's not a Russian operative. <laughs> the fact that you need to say that just shows you everything you need to know. Yeah, so they all have their issues. I just love Trump. It's much crap. I should be able to run the country how I want. <laughs> she had four years to do whatever I want. <laughs> then turn over to somebody else. We need a six-year term, and then that's it. Six years. Six years. That's it. She gets six years. She didn't have to run for re-election. You get six years and then you're out. It's just nuts. This is our politics. And what do I hear all the time? Oh, we're embarrassment to the world now. No, we're not. Shut up. Not an embarrassment to the world. That is just... That, is, that makes me laugh. I'm looking around at what's going on in Australia, and they've got a big thing happening with the freedom of the press and the not-so-freedom of the press and their raiding rooms, you know, a press rooms. I and mean, they're raiding press rooms and arresting journalists, right? Look at Hong Kong and China, what's going on there, right? you got Britain, who, who voted to leave Europe, and here we are 700 years later. They're still in Europe. It's like a nasty divorce that's never going to end, Right? Merkel and the Italians are having all kinds of issues. France is a mess. And they're voting in Canada, eh? <laughs> I mean, it's... And, and that's been a, just a giant debacle. So when I hear that, oh, we're really a mess and we're an embarrassment to the planet, shut up. That right there is clown talk. You don't like the president, that's fine. He's done some stuff that I shake my head out. We all should. Right? Some of it's just kind of like a little bit embarrassing, and a little bit, uh But when I hear, oh, yeah, did you guys hear that uh, we're an embarrassment to the planet? No, we're not. We're not an embarrassment to and Nobody else is looking at Europe's not shaking their head. Europe's got enough issues. Somebody slow your roll, right? Every place has their problems. I'll still take our problems over others. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. The text line, if you're new to the show, it's uh, several new stations out there today. Uh, if you're new to the show, you guys will get it, right? Appreciate that. You can text the program. Now, text line, we do that because, well, that's what we do. We're modern. We're kind of like fun, and we like to read your text on the air. So you can tweet at us as well, at Chad Benson Show. C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. Let me tell you about Super Beats. Now, I take my Super Beats. I love my Super Beats, right? Like, beats are so good for circulation, energy, your heart health, all that stuff. Supports, you know, healthy blood pressure. But when I'm here at work and I'm doing so much or I traveled over the weekend, I like convenience. That's where the soft chews come in. It is amazing. It is Now, they got a breakthrough ingredient, and that is grape seed extract, which supports normal blood pressure, circulation, natural energy in your body. I went. I ran around. I, I'm just working out. I'm doing all my things. I'm traveling. I drove 1,000 miles this weekend. Never felt before. I'd struggle. I'll be honest with you. I had some tiring times because I travel so much to see my son, and it can be mm, mm. That's why I love my Super Beats. That's why I love the soft shoes. Now's your chance to get soft shoes. You buy two bags. They throw a third one in free. 
You'll be going, 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 and you're going to love it. Go to superbeatsradio.com slash chat or call 800-875-9341. You buy two bags, they throw a third one in for free. Superbeatsradio.com slash chad. Superbeatsradio.com slash chad. Chad Benson Show. No fake outrage here. Just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. You see us pulling out of Syria today? Our Kurds were throwing potatoes at us. Yeah, they're not happy. We have failed them on numerous occasions. I want people to understand this isn't the... So let's go back to like 1912, right? So you got Woodrow Wilson, 1919, Versailles Conference. He tries to push for an independent Kurdistan. Nothing happens. Failure. In the 70s, what happens? Shah of Iran, right? We goat the the Iraqi Kurds into basically an uprising against the left-leaning Iraqi government. Doesn't work. We we throw them some military support, but then we eventually say, good luck. Right? They pay the price for that. In the 80s, a lot of nastiness. During the Iran-Iraq War, they paid the price for that. 100,000 Kurdish civilians were killed. A million Iraqi Kurds were displaced. Think about that for a second. Think about that. Why? Because we promised them a bunch of stuff, but then we really pulled back. 90s, much of the same thing. Right. This isn't one of those situations where, you know, we 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 used what happened in Yugoslavia. It's like, oh, my God, look at all the stuff that happened in Yugoslavia and the ethnic cleansing. All the while, we knew that the Kurds were cleansed in Iraq and we paid no attention to it because they well, they're not NATO. So we 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 this is getting close to a NATO country. We've had we we've based and then, of course, in ninety one. We really got them to play the game, right? They lost a huge, I mean, they they go out and they just, a big rebellion. Do what we ask them to do. And we're like, eh. We even make some stuff up along the way on several of these occasions. To say, no, they really weren't doing, no. We've abandoned them. At this point in time, I would not trust us at all. I wouldn't trust us as far as I could see us. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's it's don't trust. Don't trust. Because we've let you down. We've let you down on more than a few occasions. Which is not good because that area right there, about 300, 400,000 people, was pretty, as far as democracy goes, and as far as living in a world of a somewhat modern ideology, that northern part of Syria was, yeah, it was kind of secular, some democracy, and now it's... So, we could talk about it all day long. It's not the first time we let it down. I can't just blame Trump. And both parties have done it across the, the, the many, many decades. But they'll turn elsewhere now. And what does that mean for the region? Well, who knows? Who knows? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. I posted a picture earlier of... Uh... So I had, an, I had a White Castle burger earlier. And I just... I wasn't a fan. And then people are like all mad at me. Because I'm not a fan. But then they all say the same thing. Well, you got to really be... You know, it's like a two in the morning thing. And I'm like... And you got to kind of be drunk. And I'm like, well, I don't drink. So... I don't, I don't know if that's what that's saying, but I had one 35 years ago, and I had one today, and I think they were the same burger. That's all I'm saying. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. 
This is Chad Benson. In their report, researchers claim for decades the fossil fuel industry had a well-funded disinformation campaign concerning the reality of human-caused climate change. Research professor John Cook at George Mason University co-authored the report. The public just have little awareness of uh, how many millions of dollars have been spent confusing the public and just hiding the fact that their product, burning fossil fuel, is causing climate change and causing all these damages to the environment. The researchers noted a similar strategy they say used by the tobacco industry, which also faced allegations of misleading the public about the risks of smoking. (sighs) You know, climate change, let's look, has man contributed to climate change? Yes. Now we could debate how much. We could talk about that. Has it been overblown? Like the world's world's coming to an end? How many times have we heard that? Absolutely. Is it used in a way... To try to gain more political power and control? Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 110% it has. Right? You've, you've got, you know, Greta Thunberg showing up and saying, How dare you? How dare you ruin my life? That's pretty good Greta right there. Did you call on us to fix it? No! It's... It's politics. Yeah, I can tell you right now, of course the fossil fuel is spending tons of money. Some of it, I'm sure, is dif- disinformation. Some of it, though, probably is information that the other side doesn't publish. Remember this. You can go out today and you could like, what was it, a week or two ago? It's like, wait a minute, red meat? I can eat red meat now? There's no... You can find scientists... And say, all right, tell me the benefits of X, Y, and Z. And they could find some benefits to it. Look who's writing the check for stuff. Look who's writing the check. If you're getting paid from government and you feel that, you know, eh, this is a bit overblown with fossil fuels destroying the world and the end's coming tomorrow and yada, yada, yada. And some of this is just cyclical and there's nature and you could point to a lot of different things. But these people over here writing a check saying, I need to tell you that. So I'm just going to tell you all the things that are bad about fossil fuels. And there is some. Let's be real. But I'm not going to tell you how we've benefited, how far we've come, and if there is how much really it's impacted because they're paying me. And vice versa. Totally. And the difference with with when you look at smoking is they knew about it for years. They hit it. And it was pretty much everybody kind of said, "Eh." now there's still people out there that, you know, smoke. I smoke four packs a day. I live to be 112 years old. Something is. Some things are just weird. But when it comes to fossil fuel, I, I'm I'm always asking the people, right? Like they got Flightram, which is in 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 Scandinavia, in Sweden in particular, where they try to shame you for going on vacations. They're 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 talking about maybe if you fly once, it's there's no tax as far as climate change tax. But if you fly a second time, you get a tax on top of that. A third time, a bigger tax. A fourth and fifth. Well. It's about a third of the flyers worldwide who fly that are business flyers that fly a good majority of what goes on. Like, I fly several times a year. Why? I got work. I got stuff. So you're going to tax me on top of taxing me on top of taxing me? And there's about a third of people who just don't fly at all. And it's not because, oh, God, I, I, I'm worried about the environment. They just don't fly. There's a lot of people out there don't have a damn passport, for God's sakes. Never been anywhere. Don't get it, but it is what it is. It's This is a battle of feelings and some facts, and then feelings over facts, and then facts over feelings. The reality is, it's, it's like everything else in this day and age. It's become so tribal. Make you pick a side. You can't sit back for a moment and say, well, let's take a look at this. There are things that we should be working for. I'd love to get off fossil fuels. I'd love to move into a place where we have cleaner, better energy that lasts longer, that's better for the environment. I'd love, who wouldn't? I'd love cleaner air. 
right? We all want clean water. I've not met anybody who goes, nope, I don't want any clean air, and I definitely don't want clean water. Nobody's ever, but it's just like everything else. We're going to the same place. We have a different way to take it, and we're not, I'm not here to demonize one side or the other. Because for all the nastiness at times of fossil fuels and big corporations, I also enjoy the fact that I can drive and see my kid, right? I'm not having to take a train. I'm taking a week off, boys, taking a train somewhere. Like, I know you like that, Producer Phil, but I, you know, for, I mean, it's, that's the reality of it. We like having nice things. We like the fact that we can go and plug our phones in and we can enjoy those things. We, we, we like that. It's where is the happy medium, the truth, what can we accept, and what is the things that we need to work on. But these extremes get us nowhere. There's no such thing as climate change. And the other side is, we're going to die, and, and we, we should have died yesterday, but it didn't happen. So maybe maybe soon. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Chow is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. This... Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. What do I say to you? Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg says they've spent millions finding and labeling fake pages, removing more than 50 users trying to skew elections. As for voter suppression... We now take down any content uh, that is misleading about when to vote or how to vote, uh, like saying you can vote by text, which... Uh, of course, you can't do. Facebook saying it will not remove legitimate political ads for false claims, only if they incite violence or keep people from voting. Andy Field, ABC News, Washington. Let me just say this to everybody listening. If you believe you can vote by text, if you really believe that, but then you find out you can't, I don't think you should vote. <clears throat> right. I, I'm just saying, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just saying maybe it's best you just sit this one out, learn a little bit more. It's better for everybody, right? We're not saying don't ever vote. We're just saying, hey, maybe take a deep breath, see what's going on out there, learn a little bit more. You sure I can't vote by text? I'm pretty sure you can't vote by text. Right? I think you could do that. I don't know. They do that on like those music shows, right? like The Voice. Can you do that still? And is American Idol still on? Yeah, Absolutely. but outside of that, no, you can't do that. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Oh, the Doral thing, the Doral. Everybody's got their side of it. Here's Senator James Inhofe, Oklahoma. He thought he's being generous when he offered to do that. He's doing it at cost, and uh, it, but I think why open up something new that could be controversial? In that a lot of the media, not anyone here, of course. But a lot of the media hates him so much that uh, they're going to use any issue that comes up. They don't hate him. They don't like who he is, but they love who he is. They don't like the things he says, but they feed off the things he says. They don't like, I mean, uh, here's the reality of it. I work with progressives. I work with Republicans, I work with uber conservatives, and I work with uber, uber, uber socialistic people that I've known for years. And then the run of the mill, just, you know, somewhat conservative leans a little right, somewhat, you know, democratic leans a little bit left. I work with all, all types. Those people on the left aren't big fans of just regular Republicans. Neither is a lot of the media. But you know what? They love what Trump brings. They do. And for all the stuff, and and I and I, I get frustrated at a lot of stuff that Trump does. I do. I get frustrated for the tweets and some of the craziness and not listening to people and you know and just some of the bizarre lies that you tell for no reason whatsoever. I will say this: name a brand that is as beat down as the Trump brand is right now. I mean, that brand, I mean, like his his apartments, not doing well. He struggled, and a few of us, like Doral, has struggled big time. And he wasn't charging for it, right? It's like, hey, yeah, cost. He's doing it for cost. But at the same time, you should know, like, this isn't the best thing to do. Probably not the smartest thing I could do here in this day and age, because I know what's going to happen. 
And he comes out, of course, and he talks about, you know, he talks about, hey, you know, come on now. Do it for free. I'm a good guy. Right. I'm a good dude. It would have been great. But the Democrats went crazy, even though I would have done it free. Save the country a lot of money. Then they say, oh, but you'll get promotion. Who cares? You don't think I get enough promotion? I get more promotion than any human being that's ever lived. But we live in a day and age where, you know, it's like we are so ridiculous in, in uh, you know, it's like if you, you know, if you're a Trump supporter, uh, you know, on dating sites, don't, you know, tweet at me or text at me or do this. Or if you're this, or you're that. And, you know, don't we, there's no people here. MAGA, if you wear a hat like that, you can't come in this place. We live in, in a wacky, crazy world. So, you know, I mean, promotion. Yeah, you know. He's promoted the hell out of himself, but his stuff has struggled. That name is is a struggle. Those kids are going to spend years and years trying to rebuild some of that brand over time. That's a massive sacrifice. You can hate Trump all you want, but step back for a second and get out of your partisan bubble and go, yeah, you know what, that's kind of a, it's like Oprah. Let me tell you why Oprah, Oprah would probably love to be president. But she loves, everybody likes and loves her. The minute you throw your hat into that ring, guess what happens? You've alienated 30 to 50% of America. And you've chosen a side. And that side will love you. The other side now that used to love you, that used to watch your show, that used to buy your products, that used to listen to what you have to say, now will do none of it. Because we're that tribal. 323-538-2423 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson. Ciao is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text line. That text line, you can leave a message. And usually that voice thing, because it always sends me like what the text should be. Like, cause you so people will leave a message on the text line. And sometimes there's an audio file and sometimes it tries to transcribe it. And it's like, hey, is Chaz Vincent? Is this the Chaz Vincent show? <laughs> no. Uh, but you can text the program directly or tweet at us. I work with the great organizations. If you're new to the show, I want you to check this out. Uh, they're called Wounded Paw Project. They recognize the struggle that our veterans, our first responders, and their families have. And they also recognize that we have too many animals out there, many of them who are being euthanized in shelters. And what they do is unite our furry best friends with our veterans, our first responders, and their family. And it really does change lives like you could not believe. Their motto is, save a paw, is save a life. It is amazing what they do. It really is. To see where they take these shelter dogs and turn them into service dogs, but to see also that while those dogs are serving and helping out, how it changes the lives of so many other people, it's incredible. But they do need your help. And how's that? Simple. Take action today. Turn your extra car truck, RV, even a boat into a vehicle for change. You're going to be saving a paw to save a life. You can donate it. You get an amazing tax deductible gift. They also take cash. But check it out for yourself and see what you can do. Go to WoundedPawProject.org or call 844-678-4PAW. That's 844-678-4729 or WoundedPawProject.org. Chad Benson Show. You go, boy. This isn't about right or left. This is just about right and wrong. Right you are, Chad. The Chad Benson Show. Quentin Tarantino saying no to China. Actors are required to do a a lot of dangerous stuff. The director was asked to recut his movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in order to appease censors in China. And according to The Hollywood Reporter, Tarantino won't do it. The film was supposed to premiere there next week. There's no official word over what scenes in particular censors have issues with. But speculation is that it has to do with the portrayal of martial arts expert Bruce Lee. Yeah, well, he was a martial arts expert. He was pretty badass. I was thinking the other day, I wonder what Bruce would command for a film. Because you know he'd be all fit and just still yoked and doing his thing. He would have, man, he'd had been awesome. That would have been cool. Bruce Lee was, was badass. Let's not let's not pretend. But I like the fact that Tarantino said no. Like, this is what it is, right? The NBA can do its thing. But if you don't want to show my movies, don't show my movies. I'm, I'm not going to change it for you. Right? Now, and this is what's really interesting. Harvey Weinstein... This is the first movie he made without Harvey. I can almost guarantee that Harvey probably would have said, you need to change it. We need to get to that marketplace. It's going to be huge money. 
you need to change it. They love nostalgia. They love old Americana. If you change this, this will be huge. And But Harvey's not there, right? Because he's a scumbag. And so there you go. Look at that. 323-538-2423, at Chet Benson Show, your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Somebody texted in about Facebook asking about, wait, they're not going to change false claims on political ads? Well, no. Like, if you're going to lie about, like, I think it's the flat earth thing. I don't think you do those type of things. It's really weird. Like, Facebook, is it, again, it's still very arbitrary on Facebook. So the, supposedly for 2020, so like everybody can run ads if you're running for whatever you're running for, right? You know, school board all the way up to president, you can run ads. It's the false claims for other things, like what they're saying, like voting. So if there's, quote unquote, people trying to vote suppression, don't worry about going to voting places or sending people to the wrong places. And this is where you need to vote. That is what they'll stop you at. I don't think it's their job to decide. That's your job to look up whether or not that person's telling the truth. I don't think that's that's not Facebook's job. If, if, if a politician's lying to you, and I can almost certainly guarantee most of them, if not lying, they know that what they're promising isn't what they can deliver. Right? They know that. They're telling you one thing. Knowing full well they're not going to let, but that's on you to find that stuff out. That's on you, because we live in a world now where we only tell our side of the team's scores. How'd you guys do? We scored eight. How'd the other team do? We scored eight. What'd the other team do? We scored eight. But did you win or lose? We scored eight, and that's all that they want to say. So it's up to you. And in this day and age. People are frustrated. People don't know where to go. I talk to a lot of people who don't even know what to believe anymore. And that's also part of the problem. That's a huge problem. Man, I don't know really what to believe. I get that. Right? I get that. Like, you have to, like, there are several places I go that I trust, but I also verify some of the stuff. And there are several, you start to learn, okay, these people here, these reporters, this organization tends to get it right. And remember, not everything's going to be perfect. Even in, a, in, in the quote-unquote perfect scenario, sometimes people are also going to be delivered false information or a portion of the data. 323-538-2423, at Chad Bunsen Show. It's your Twitter and your Instagram, kids. The kids are on the gram nowadays. So am I. I'm not a kid, though. But I am on the Instagram. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. What a day. Every time you turn around in politics nowadays, you guys see yesterday Mick Mulvaney on with Chris Wallace. Just so bizarre. Surreal. The whole thing. Just like, I didn't say that. I didn't say anything about a quid pro quo. Nuh-uh. I don't know who you thought said that. It wasn't me. Are you sure it wasn't me? It was a little bit. Maybe not. I don't know. Kind of. You don't know. You know who I am. <laughs> so bizarre. We live in a wacky world, kids. A wacky world. I was talking to the guys off air. I don't know if you guys saw this last week. and it, we, This is frightening. So, Cuyacan, which is in Mexico last week, in the Sinaloa area, had a battle. That was absolutely terrifying. When you talk about the drug wars, when you talk about all of these things, 
look, this is and this is not a small area. I mean, the Sinaloa area is about three million people. And the cartels, so this is where little man, El Chapo's two kids were. I just want to paint a picture for you guys of how terrifying it is. And you wonder why people want to escape certain things. But think about this. They had a gun battle because they arrested El Chapo's two sons. Their crew broke out the oldest son, who then, and this is the army, Then they turned on the group that held the younger son to the point where they surrounded the army in an ongoing gun battle. And the president of the country said, give him back and surrender. Think about that for a second. Is that terrifying? Like, nobody talked about it. Like, very little. And to watch it, because people were just filming it on the streets, it was frightening to see what was going on. It was insane. There's a running gun battle going on, and guess what? This just said to Mexico, guess what? The cartels, we own Sinaloa. It is ours. Do not come here. If we want, we may change the name. That's how frightening that is. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Why? Here's my first question. Why did you say in that briefing that President Trump had ordered a quid pro quo? Because that's what people are saying that I said, but I, I didn't say that. But you did. But you didn't. And here's the thing. First of all, People are asking the question on the Republican side. That's disturbing. Why is he giving a press conference? He's your chief of staff. Where's your press secretary? Can anybody tell me who his press secretary is? Can anybody tell me that? Have you seen her? Because it's it was Pence's, right? Like, wasn't it his? Was it his or was it his wife's? Or I mean, has anybody seen her at all? When's the last time that she, you know, I mean, it's like I've seen very little of her. I know she's out there. I know she's given a few interviews. Right, Stephanie Grisham. But outside of that, I I mean, you know, I can't remember the last time she had a full-blown, like, but he's out there giving interviews, and you said something, and they're trying to distance themselves. But what you said was enough to make people go, mm, that feels uncomfortable, right? I don't, don't that, that, that feels like you guys were doing it for personal gain and not for the betterment of the United States. It feels like, much like Hillary, you're trying to figure out how to replay the election where you could show that they did dirty on the president and also along the way get yourself a little dirt on the people that are running now, in particular Biden, who by the sounds of it and what you're trying to do, you feel is your biggest threat. I'm just saying, from my point of view, it feels like it from my point of view i believe that anyone listening to what you said in that briefing could come to only one conclusion let's play what you said sir did he also mention to me in past the corruption related to the dnc server absolutely no question about that um but that's it and that's why we held up the money you just described is a quid pro quo it is funding will not flow unless the investigation into the into the democratic server uh happen as well we we do we do that all the time with foreign policy yeah yeah but there's difference is it is it for the betterment of the united states for the allies of the united states right is it is it in our best interest not in your best interest now they're backing away from it he's tried to walk away but it, it's still it's it, 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 i don't think he made it any better and then saying yesterday well i didn't say that you did say it and if I'm Trump, today, he goes out, he talks about all this stuff. You know what I don't do? I don't talk about any of it. Let's talk about the economy. They didn't want to talk about that in the debates. That's what matters to the American people. I'm letting other people handle those things. Well, what about such and such? Don't care about that. I care about the economy and immigration. We're trying to get stuff done. I'd like to get an infrastructure deal done, and I think we could do it. 
I care about putting the American people back to work and keeping the American people to work. I care about those things. That's the stuff that you should be talking about if I'm him. I'm not bringing up Doral. I'm not bringing up anybody else. All I'm talking about is the things that matter to the American people. Because not a lot's changed, right? Some people, eh, they've always wanted him impeached. And quite frankly, I think we're at the point now where I feel like we're going to be looking to our leaders to try to catch them on anything to try to get them to get the people out all the time. I think we're at that point, at least right now, from the lot because and part of that is also the way we consume television is we like conflict. So we're going to expect that. Right. Like they don't know. I mean, the, the, the mainstream media. Traditional media is what I call them. They don't know. I mean, L.A. Times, New York Times. Right. Washington Post, CNN, MSNBC, Fox. They, they don't know anymore what it's like. Like, they're hopped up. Their drug of choice is Trump. They wouldn't even know what to do without Trump. Like, right now, it's like, dude, I need to hit a Trump pad. Oh, yeah, I do. What you got? I got a little Trump. Oh, you do? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a little bit. What is it? It's a person who knows a person who knows a person about something inside that says this. No way. Oh, it's going to be awesome. That's like their thing. That's like that's their. They don't know anything outside of that anymore. They're gone. We're going to have to give them some Narcan. They're, they're ODing on it. But if I'm Trump, I'm taking it all away. I'm making them go cold turkey. You guys focus on the craziness. You guys focus on the conflict. You guys focus on all the other things. The American people want to stay at work. They want raises. They want to feel comfortable. They want to feel safe. They want to look around and say, you know what? We're doing the work we're supposed to be doing. And that's what I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. I don't care about everything else. Guess what? Other people are handling that. Not me. If you want to go talk to them, fine. And I tell them, stay on point, stay a few things, and just talk about your wins. That's all you need to talk about. Let me talk about my wins. Because look at Nancy Pelosi. When she goes in front of the camera, she wants to talk about 10 other things. Because she, too, is smart enough to realize, well, I better show the American people I'm working. And we're trying to get stuff done. And nobody cares. The press doesn't ask. She'll go, does anybody else have a question about whatever bill? And it's dead silent. Nope. Not a person. Zero. Nobody cares. They care about conflict and craziness and chaos. Because it gets clicks, it gets likes, it gets shares, it gets views. That's what they want. If I'm Trump, I'm telling everybody we're going cold turkey. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show. Is your Twitter? You can tweet at us. Massive settlement today as far as opioids go, and it's a big one, and not in the way that we've seen before because there's a reason for that. This had nothing to do with the pharmaceutical companies and all to do with the distribution of said Opioids. Three of the nation's largest drug distributors and a drug manufacturer agreed to a $260 million settlement to avoid what was to be the first federal opioids trial. A holdout was the pharmacy chain Walgreens, which could go to trial months from now if there's no settlement first. The agreement resolves a case brought by Ohio's Cuyahoga and Summit counties, but could lay the groundwork for settlements in some 2,300 other opioids cases filed in federal courts nationwide. Yeah, and this, these cases were different because they were all put in together. So these are all big and small pharmaceutical, I mean, not pharmaceuticals, but like Walgreens and, and one-off pharmacies and things like that. So it's not like if it's a $260 million that they split it. Each one will be charged something different, right? Because obviously there was like a small regional one in, in that had two locations. They're not going to pay the same amount, but they're still going to pay something. And the thought process is, is anybody at all that had anything to do with the opioid problem, whether you made the plastic things that the opioids go into, you printed the stickers, You made the paper of which the prescriptions was written on. They're coming out for everybody. Everybody. 
And this was seen because it was going to go to trial as a re- the 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 real like everybody was focusing on this across the board. It's kind of the bellwether thing because they want to see if this thing was going to really go to trial and then they were going to get some sort of judgment. Communities across, not states, but communities, cities across the country were going to look and say, okay, this is what we need to do. This is how we need to do it. But they settled. It's, it, it's, it's, again, this is a nightmare. It is. It's a nightmare. Because do I think that some of these, you know, it's like, is it Walgreens? Are they supposed to decide who should we get? I mean, who do they alert? Who do you call? Like, if you're, if you're, if you're somebody who's a pharmacy assistant, and he's like, man, this person that maybe has too many, who, who do you call? Who do you bring it up to? Do you bring it up to the pharmacist? Who do they call? And But they've got a prescription. And, I mean, it's like, I don't know. It, it's tough. But, like I said, if you made the little pill, this, you know, dispenser that the pills come in, you may be in line for a lawsuit. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show. Is your Twitter. Sleep well at night, kids. Do it with my pillow. My pillow's amazing. Mike Lindell and has been great to the show and my pillow's supported the show since we, we kicked off and we're growing and, and, and I and he said, What what can you do for your audience? I said, Well, how about we do some like really cool stuff, like big discounts? He said, Done. And there's huge discounts right now on all the product, everything. All you do is go to MyPillow.com, go to the new radio listener special, boom, you click on that, you type in Benson, and away you go. But on top of that, he says, why don't we do this? This one's really good. Buy one, get one free. Buy one MyPillow, get another MyPillow absolutely free. And we'll give him a 60-day money-back guarantee and a 10-year warranty. I said, that sounds amazing. Now's your chance. Save big. Go to MyPillow.com. Uh, code Benson, when you go to the new radio listener special, they're going to treat you amazing. The stuff is incredible. I travel a lot, and trust me. It is so amazing. When I, and that mattress topper, I just, I can't, I'm, before you go buy a really expensive bed, get the mattress topper. It's a world changer. Go to MyPillow.com, MyPillow.com. Go to new radio listener special. Take advantage of the two-for-one MyPillows and everything else they have there. Make sure you type in code Benson. It is the Chad Benson Show. separation anxiety <laughs> that's dumb check out chad 24 7 at his website chadbensonshow.com and on itunes free the chad benson show, show. show. never feel lonely again five four three two one zero ignition lift off now it's time to find out what's trending what's trending yeah what does that mean i mean something right like it's trending on the old internet what's trending all right let's find out what's trending around the globe or mostly right here in the united states of america pierre delecto that's mitt romney's sneaky name that's his twitter handle is trending it's just still it's so amazing dennis quaid is trending he is getting married to uh someone what like 30 years his junior not even now almost jeez almost almost 40 years his junior 39 years i will say this at 65 like we should all be so lucky to look that good at 65 zion williamson is trending he's the number one over pick overall pick in the nba and the reason he's trending is he's going to be out the first six to eight weeks, and people are already worried about what he is because he's got some knee issues. And did they pick somebody who basically is broken? It's possible. And weather radar, lots of weather nationwide. Not where I'm at. It's beautiful. We're going to be in the 80s this week and 70s next week. Enjoy. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter on Twitter. Trending. Costumes that shouldn't be sexy. So this weekend, I took my son to his after school. They had like a a Halloween party. And he goes to like this arts society thing. So it's like kind of a, you know, it's it's pretty she-she for kids, I guess. I don't know. 
And it's kindergarten through like eighth grade. I was just flabbergasted for people that wear certain costumes. There was a guy there that wore this skin tight costume that I was like, I don't know if you should be wearing that, right? But there was a lot of women there that were like, I don't know if that's appropriate. Like, it's great. And I'm sure uh, like in an, like an adult costume party, that's pretty cool. Like, if you wore that to work, they're going to be like, uh, we're pulling you in. We have a question or two. Like, but I have a zombie face. I know. Nobody's looking at your face. That's all I'm saying. That's tweeting. As well as uh, my worst costume and the emollients clause is also treating. Check it out. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Now you guys are caught up in the know, which is mightily important in life, to be in the know. Text the program. Tweet at me as well. Check out the Instagram. We've got the, uh, we tweeted out the 100 greatest rock singers, according to Rolling Stone. It's the Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Oh, words, words, words. Live in a weird world. Words matter. What you say matters in the context of how it's received. Who uses that word could or couldn't matter depending on the situation. Case in point, a security guard who was fired for defending himself from the use of the N-word. Not a bunch of white kids, but other black kids slurring at him, and he was fired for using it. Think about that for a second. The wackiness and the weirdness. You had the GM of the LA Sparks team that was just fired, which is the WNBA team, because in her one of her she went down and 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 gave some sort of pep talk and reamed the team and just went after him. She dropped the N bomb on more than a few occasions. Her also being black. And then you've got a situation where music is nonstop. I've got like, I listen to all kinds of music. And I make sure when I listen to my son, I'm like, what is he like? Who, who are these people? Are there, is there a clean version of some of this stuff? But I tell you what, you listen to some of this music and you're just like, okay, like I'm not an old fuddy-duddy. What you say, how you do it, I got no problem with it. That's you? You want to live in that world? You want to drop that because that's what you feel that this is what my world is? There you go. But even now, some people are taking offense. And this guy just defended himself. A powerful movement by hundreds of students and teachers got the district's attention for firing former security guard Marlon Anderson. Students organized a walkout and teachers marched alongside them. It hurt me. Because he's a good man. For several hours, as students marched outside, making their voices heard. Several students sat down with interim superintendent Jane Belmore and Board of Education President Gloria Reyes about bringing Anderson back and reevaluating the zero tolerance policy that got Anderson fired. Yeah. Well, hold on a second. (laughs) He did what? Well, there was some unruly kids, and they dropped the end bomb, and he told them not to call him the end bomb, and because of that, there's a zero tolerance. Well, apparently not for those kids, just for him. Students and staff behind him are hopeful that their message Bring back was loud and clear. District staff said they are speeding up the process to get the community answers as soon as possible. They have brought to our attention things that we had not thought about. A community that is hoping their beloved security guard is welcomed back with as much anticipation as his son says he has to return. Yeah, they say that he will be willing to return to the school um, for all y'all. So he loves y'all. 
Yeah, a guy was sideswiped by this, right? Now think about that. And it's a word that, I mean, in this day and age, because, you know, words, are, it's incredible. Some words have connotation when you think about the way it's used and, when, and who's used it in the past. You th- It is a vile, disgusting word. Other words, people just take and decide that hurts them. It's two different things. This guy was basically saying, please don't call me that. And he got fired for it. That's insane. Cher came out and said, I'll pay for your legal defense if you want to go and sue them. There's a change.org petition. People are pissed off about this. And in this day and age, you don't need a lot to be pissed off to hold some sort of, you know, let's all get together and rally for something. It's still a very bizarre thing. But words are so much different. Remember when we were kids growing up? I, w- I was telling producer Anthony this. Like, I had to talk with my son over the weekend. My son's nine. Again, news show. My son Jack is nine years old. And we had a long discussion this weekend about, you know, partly because I, I said, you know, I don't want you to listen to some of this music. Even though it's some of its radio edit. As far as, you know, I, I, I check on big time. I check on who's his YouTube stars he likes. I give him a pass and yay or nay or any of these things. But the same thing. Because I'm like, no. No. You don't listen to some of this. Even if it is the clean version, just sorry, you're nine. But I was telling producer Anthony earlier, I said, it's so weird when I was a kid you know, I'm 48. So, you know, when I'm a kid, it's like, don't get anybody pregnant, right? Like mom and dad are like, don't get anybody pregnant. and Don't do drugs, right? You know, don't be an idiot. They give you the little, you know, marching orders and stuff that, that they would tell you. Nowadays, it's don't vape and be careful what you say and what you tweet, what you put on social media, because that'll come back and bite you in the ass. You may think it's harmless at 14. Wait till you get your first big job and somebody digs it up because somebody's looking. And they may have found two years ago, but it's not the time. Those are the, that's what you have to tell kids nowadays. It's nuts. But this right here is just insane. It's just insane. But words, I'm telling you guys nowadays, words are matter and people who like, I'm, you know, as I've read several stories, I'm like, so what exactly took place outside of that? Because what I don't hear or read about is a lot of what took place with these kids. Right? At one point, somebody says, we've labeled this word that was given to us in oppression to pretty much keep us in those chains mentally that we used to be in physically. The problem is kids identify their skin as that word. I've tried to make this a teaching moment. It's just insane you got to watch out what's going on in this day and age. And remember, it's no longer what you say. It's how it's taken. And some people are taking things out of context, and some people don't have common sense. Some things like this right here, this entire we got to get rid of you because we have a zero tolerance policy, not for the kids who called you that, though, but for you for saying don't call me that. 323-538-2423. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. It's like being in a fight and somebody throws a punch, sucker punches you, and they break their hand, then they sue you. <laughs> we have a zero tolerance policy for you breaking people's hands on your face. That's bizarre. Oh, my God. It's just nuts. <sighs> what do you say about Trump and impeachment? That's a big question. It is. It is. Some people, of course, want him gone. Me, at this point, I think that there needs to be some due diligence. I want my president to be successful. I don't want any president impeached. Uh, But I think at this point in time, we've passed that area uh, of whether or not it's going to happen. It's the removal side that I think people are looking at. He's given us a gift. He's given us an opportunity. Across the board, across the board, Democrats, Republicans, and I'm not talking about because I'm running. Across the board, people have decided... Enough is enough. Some people have. Some people have. Some people haven't. Right? Here's the thing with, with, with Trump. If you go and you look, 
at his support, it pretty much doesn't wane, right? It's 38 to 42 percent, give or take, but that's pretty much where it's been. It's ticked up a little bit. I think it's gotten as high as 46, and it's gotten down a little bit further. But outside of that, it's 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 right there. It is. It's it, it's right there. And part of the problem also is, even if he's done something wrong, the American public thinks that all of them do stuff wrong all the time, that they should be impeached for. So why is what he did potentially any different why should i be mad at him when you you know they'll throw you know joe biden out there why should i be mad at him when you hear you know obama talking to the russians saying hey when i get reelected i'll i'll be able to have more leeway and more maneuverability why should that's what you know people just feel like it's just part of doing business and so you're just coming after him and i think that's the part of the problem that the democrats have is that you have shown that you can't stand him as a human being. So that alone should get him impeached, which is not the way we work. I get frustrated with Trump with the way he acts at times, some of the things he says, you know, some of the chaos. He, I know he thrives in chaos and he lives in it, but I think some of it at times is frustrated and erratic and, you know, tweeting and, and not listening to people and then attacking people who you go to for advice and they don't give you the advice they want. And then they finally they leave. And the first thing you say is, you know, General Mattis is the worst general in the history. And he's overrated and blah, blah, and stuff like that. That's that stuff frustrates me. Some of the stuff I like. The fact that he took on immigration. I don't like some of the things he's done, but the fact that he took it on and he said he was going to take it on. I'm fine with downsizing. When it comes to the military and bring us out of certain areas, I got zero problems with it. The way you did it, I have a problem with. I mean, there's certain things, yes. And the way that I think you've handled the economy and tried to go about doing things. I'm an action person over words, but words matter. Words absolutely matter. But not liking them is not a reason for impeachment. And I think the problem that they have selling it to a lot of the American people, even people who can't stand Trump, is, yeah, but how many others have done this? How many others have gone and played this game? How many others have said things in certain ways? No matter how you try to shape it, like, look, this was for his personal gain, for his campaign. This had zero to do with the betterment of the American people. We already think most politicians are in it for themselves anyways. 323-538-2423 Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. By the way, can I just say something? So I took Jack to his little. He had like a little Halloween party. You'll appreciate this, producer Phil. He had a little Halloween party uh, for his after school program. And uh, hey, moms, it's for like kindergarten through sixth grade. You don't have to. Wear that. Not that I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. If I'm a kid, I'm like, Mom, do you really need to look like a stripper? (laughs) Is this too much? Yeah. You know, kids showing up as Pokemon and there's mom wearing a, you know, a nurse outfit. But she looked, but she's got a great paint on her face because she's a zombie nurse. If the zombie nurse was a stripper, <laughs> I just, I'm curious about that. Like, like how embarrassed, like a lot of kids are embarrassed by their parents for different reasons. That's one of those ones where like, mm, I don't know if you need to wear that, mom. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Blink. Oh, kids blink. Ah. I love my Blink cameras. I do. Absolutely love, love, love my Blink cameras. I've got them for my lizards. It's it's amazing. I watch them. My lizards are so important to me. But I wanted to make sure they're taken care of because I worry about somebody coming and stealing them. So I've got them around my house for all the animals and for everything to protect all the things that matter the most, the people inside of there, but also my lizards. And it's just awesome. And on top of that, I get a lot of stuff delivered. And everybody's known somebody who's like, I had something delivered the other day, never showed up. That's why I recommend Blink. Blink Motion activated indoor and outdoor cameras. They're 
So amazing. Easy to set. Wire-free. Set up in a few minutes. Double-A batteries. A couple of those. Boom. They last a couple years. And if you're traveling, you got the live feed option. That's where I monitor my monitors. Check in on all the other pets. Right there with my Blink smartphone app. It's no contracts, no subscriptions, totally affordable. And Blink works with Alexa. Now's your chance, kids. Blink camera systems are simple and quick to install. They're a brilliant way to monitor your package delivery. Visit BlinkProtect.com slash Benson. That's BlinkProtect.com slash Benson. BlinkProtect.com slash Benson. Blink is an Amazon company. Chad Benson Show. Let the Washington Beltway strangle you. This is where the exhausted majority comes to refuel, realign, and reevaluate. This is Chad Benson. It all started a few weeks ago when director Martin Scorsese put Marvel movies on blast, saying they're not cinema. And now Francis Ford Coppola has chimed in. The Oscar-winning Godfather director said over the weekend, quote, Martin was kind when he said it's not cinema. He didn't say it's despicable, which I just say it is. He says with cinema, we expect to learn something like enlightenment or knowledge or inspiration. Marvel director James Gunn responded on social media saying the same stuff has been said for years about different genres, westerns, space movies, even gangster films. And not everyone will be able to appreciate them, even some geniuses. And that's okay. Uh, Here's my thing. Why are you guys attacking each other, right? People like both sides of the creative aisle, right? Right. People love Godfather and Godfather 2. People love the amazing Spider-Man and the Avengers and all that stuff. And nothing wrong with either of them. When you start criticizing, though, people's art, that's you're, you're basically saying that everybody who works in those movies, the people who created the movies from top to bottom, I'm not just talking about the, the oh, did you hear, you know, they did this movie and it's based on this and somehow... The comic book isn't really a movie. And I just, I just find that to be a bunch of crap. Who are you to get to say that these things are so awful? Obviously, they're not that bad. Are you saying all of the people out there who like those movies are stupid? Or is that what you're saying? Because it feels like you're attacking those people as well. Like, did you know that people that watch those movies are, are inbred and stupid? They wouldn't get my kind of movie. Why? Your movie had the villain, a dramatic story. It had family, right? When you look at The Godfather, you go and look at a lot of the stuff that Scorsese's done. Character-driven, good. What's wrong with these characters? Not deep enough? Well, they're not deep enough because they wear superhero outfits. It's stupid. It really is. I find that to be ignorant. So settle down there, people who find themselves to be uber important when it comes to the media world. And I enjoy those movies. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Love hearing about you. Facebook, kids. It's got some issues. Absolutely they do. And what are those issues? Well, they're still trying to figure out how to make sure they're not part of the problem, even though they seem to be somewhat okay with being part of the problem in 2016. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg says they've spent millions finding and labeling fake pages, removing more than 50 users trying to skew elections. As for voter suppression... We now take down any content uh, that is misleading about when to vote or how to vote, uh, like saying you can vote by text, which... Uh, of course you can't do. Facebook saying it will not remove legitimate political ads for false claims, only if they incite violence or keep people from voting. Yeah, if you think you can vote by tax, don't vote no matter where you find out it is. I just want to point that out. If in any way, shape, or form you think, sure, I could vote by tax, no, you can't. And just the thought process of you thinking you could vote by tax automatically, according to me and everybody else, has disqualified you from actually voting in the real election. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. So much stuff still going on when it comes to Trump and the craziness. Not going to have it at the row. Mick Mulvaney and the fight that's going on there. Was it a quid pro quo? Was it all these things? Kids, it's not going anywhere. It's never going to end the way that people think it's going to end. Just like that overnight because we're going to focus on something else. Drama is part of what keeps things going and driving in the world of media. You know it. I know it. We all know it. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can text the program. 
The text line is 323-538-2423. And check out the Instagram and the Facebook as well. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your evening. We'll do it again tomorrow. Night, night, Jack. This is The Chad Benson Show.